Welcome back guys to another round table. My name is Adam and happy new year and welcome to 2024. Uh, I had a really good time and we're happy to be back uh, at this round table. So once again, let me introduce uh, my favorite people. I have Rusman. Yep. Hello. Victor. Hi everyone. And we have AK. Hello. A very different AK. <laughs> so, uh, which AK are you? I am a different AK. I'm the <laughs> younger version of the AK. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. Okay, but <laughs> <laughs> but you wanna introduce yourself and let everyone know which AK you are. AK exposed. Here we go. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm the original AK. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Okay, so this is a different AK, Adam Koo. I think many of you may know him. He has his own YouTube channel as well. Almost a million subscribers. Uh, and we know AK for a long time. Yes. And I'm very, very happy to have you here. We're gonna talk about, you know, how you made uh, two million dollars in gains last year alone in your portfolio okay so we're gonna go straight into that but the reason why I'm so happy to have you here is because this year in January is our 10 year anniversary as well we've been we've been on for 10 years congrats yeah. guys yeah thank you <laughs> thank so you. much yeah I couldn't, done, I couldn't have done it with you guys as well <laughs> so I mean some journey very long journey yeah. I'm yeah. a lot older now as well uh, so you know some of you may not know but we have a we started with a website fifthperson.com is still I mean we still write articles there and as well uh, all the time uh, and we started 10 years ago and then use the YouTube YouTube channel um, began maybe two three years and they've yep. have been doing round tables so because this is our 10, 10 year uh, thing we wanted to have Adam here uh, because when we first started out you know uh, you helped us a lot yep. so I still remember when we first started this business yep. we started my bedroom Yep, yes, <laughs> yeah, yes, and also Starbucks and yeah. Starbucks and stuff like that. And, and then we moved to Adam Co office. Yeah, and Adam was the one who actually kind of like, hey, I have an office yeah. room. You guys want to just kind of like use it for free, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you. Yeah, of course, uh, Patrick as well. Yeah, yeah. Patrick, uh, your partner as well. So you guys were really, really kind and yeah. just gave us a room. Five of us guys like squashed into that room. That's how we started. Yeah. How we started. And <laughs> we are we are we are in there for about a year. Yeah, 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 it was it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah you know those 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 journeys. Yeah. I think yeah. as an entrepreneur yourself, Adam's an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you remind you remember those days. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 So today we're gonna have Adam. Uh, to talk about your portfolio, and then we're gonna do a giveaway as well because it's our ten year anniversary. So I'm just gonna give a really quick introduction about what we're giving away. We're giving away, uh, you know, an, an Apple Watch. All right, this is brand new, unopened. Okay, and then uh, an iPad Air. Okay, this is all sealed up. And then an iPhone 15 Pro. Again, this is all unopened. All right, so if you want to win all these prizes and how we're going to give them away, do stay tuned to the end of the video. We're going to share, you, share with you the, the, you know, the steps on how you can do that. But right now, we're going to talk about Adam and uh, your $2 million in gains uh, last year. Okay, so for those who don't know you, I mean, I mean a lot of people don't know you, but those who don't know you, tell us a bit more about yourself, how you invest. Okay, so yeah, I've been in the markets for over 30 years mm -hmm. and I've been teaching investing now since 2005. So I think this is the 19th year. Um, so over the years, I've had so many different styles of mm -hmm. investing and trading. I traded CFDs, I traded futures and Forex and options and long-term investing, everything. So now I focus mainly on long-term investing as well as I do swing trades as well. Mm -hmm. And quite a number of the swing trades I do is using options to execute the, the, the swing trades. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. And for long-term investing, I've got my capital gain portfolio, which is the US portfolios. I've got two of them. And I've also got a dividend portfolio, wow. uh, okay. which is just investing in Singapore banks mm. and some of the Singapore REITs. REITs. Okay. Yeah. So you sound like you are more fundamentals when it comes to your uh, long-term investing. It's, yeah. it's, it's interesting. When I first started, I was a pure technical analysis guy. Ah. I was all about charts and charts and charts. And then I, you know, over, over the years, now I would say I'm more fundamental. Mm. Actually, it depends. When it comes to the investing part, it's 90% fundamentals. Mm. and 10% technicals to kind of like find the entry. optimal entry points yeah. and optimal exit points, right? But for my short-term trading with options, then it's the opposite. Then it's 90% technicals mm -hmm. and 10% fundamentals. So it depends on, is it an investment or a trade? Mm -hmm. And you gotta use the right tools for the goal you wanna achieve, basically. You have to know which tools to use for yeah. which uh, type of trading or investing you're doing. Yeah. That's where people get in mixed up. All right, so let's go straight to the headline in this video is basically you made US $2 million in gains yep. in your portfolio. So the first 
you know, question that someone could ask as watching this, you know, $2 million, that's really impressive. But you know, if I had $50 million, I can make 2 million as well. Yeah. So okay. what was the size of your, I mean, if you can share, yeah. size of your portfolio, what were your percentage gains last year? Okay, so this actually is close to 2.1 million US. Okay. And this is from my capital gain portfolio. This doesn't include my dividend portfolio, nice. right? So my capital gain portfolio, I've got two. Uh, actually, they are replicate of each other, right? right. And um, it started 2023 combined, 5 million US. Ah. So I made 2.1 out of 5. So mm. that's slightly 40 about percent. 40 plus percent, yeah. right? So now it stands at about 7 million US, right? So 40 plus percent, um, I, I would say it's, it's, it's decent, given the fact that I'm very conservative as an investor. Decent. I use no leverage. You say that's decent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use any leverage. Okay. Yeah. And I'm very well, well diversified. As mm. in, I've got over 40 stocks in a portfolio. Mm. And, not, and they are not all growth companies. I've got a lot of defensives as well, all right? Uh, in fact, I've got a lot of my students, which if you go to my Facebook page, I share their uh, results. Many of them got over 100% return, mm. uh, more than me. It's not because they're better than me. Okay. Right. <laughs> but it's because they are younger, mm. so they are more aggressive. They use some leverage, which I don't, right? And they do a lot more, more concentration where they don't have any defensive stocks. They are purely into growth. Mm -hmm. So it, it all depends on your age. I mean, I'm 50, close to 50. So I'm a lot more conservative than if I was in my 20s. If I was in my 20s, I would go for 100% a year, which I know I can, mm -hmm. but you have to have the stomach to take the bigger volatility, right? Mm. You concentrate, you use more leverage. When you trade options, you trade it bigger. But I don't, I, 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 I'm very conservative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I think the yeah. next question is really, you know, because I, I, you, it's a 40 plus percent a year. Mm. And I think last year S&P ended at around 23%. Plus, right? Something yeah. like that. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what do you do that that get this, you know, 40%. I think most of the uh, people watching this will, will be curious. You know? Okay. Yeah. So very simple. So if you look at my portfolio, the majority of my stocks are concentrated into three sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, technology, communication services, and consumer discretionary. And these happen to be the three top performing sectors of 2023. Mm -hmm. Okay. So obviously that <laughs> made up most of the gains, yeah. like, right? Mm -hmm. um, and why do I invest in these three sectors? It was not specifically because I thought this year these three sectors will do well because we never know. We can never predict which will do well in which year, yeah. all right? Although I did guess it would because last year in the bear market, those were the three worst performing sectors. Mm, okay. Technology, consumer yeah. discretionary, and uh, communications were the worst. So from my historical um, memory, that the worst sectors in a bear market are usually the best sectors in a new bull market, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So that drove my portfolio. Uh, so, you know, so I own like, I still own Microsoft, Nvidia. I own all the Magnificent Seven except Tesla. Okay. <laughs> right, so you Tesla okay. fanboy school, you know, I'm gonna upset you, I don't care, right? Yeah, so that drove both my gains, mm -hmm. but I also had a lot of um, non Mac 7, but within that sector. So like ServiceNow, uh, mm, Mercado okay. Libre, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Booking.com. Mm -hmm. These okay, are all yeah. the compounders, mm. right? So most of my portfolio, more than half are compounders, right? Then the rest, I have more defensives uh, to kind of even it out mm -hmm. or moderately cyclical companies. Okay, so yeah. would you say 40% is a typical <laughs> year for you since this is something that you said rebounded in No, it's not a typical year. It's not a typical okay. year, right? So I give you an example, and if you watch my YouTube videos, which you, you, you should. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I show my returns every year, mm. uh, and then I show you my longer term returns. Mm. Okay. So uh, in 2022, we had a bear market. Yes. My portfolio was down that year, and I did a whole video on that to show that I was down uh, last year, all right, by I think it was uh, close to 30% mm. uh, in 2022. But previous years, okay, if I can recall, uh, 2019, I was up 47%. 2020, I was up 44%, 45%. 2021, I was up 23%. I was actually quite hit by China in 2023. Mm -hmm. Sorry, 2021. That's mm -hmm. why it pulled down to 23%. Then 2022, I was down 30%. And this 2023, I'm up uh, 40, actually it's 46%. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you take my five-year uh, cumulative, uh, which I shared on my Facebook page as well. It's about 145% return. 
Yeah. Okay. Very right. impressive. Yeah, very uh, impressive. Which yeah. I give. I think given the fact that the last five years we went through two bear markets, <laughs> one recession, banking crisis, pandemic. Uh, and and war, I think not bad. I think some people I would say those, those are opportunities, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, to actually bad, do yeah. better, right? right? Yeah. Actually, yeah. I, I I did a lot better in the previous five to ten okay. years. Okay. Because yeah. it was a very smooth boom market. Yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 So yeah. just curious, what's your exposure in Chinese market previously? That was, that was in twenty twenty one when you say it kind of. Okay, I think portfolio. my initial exposure was maybe twelve, thirteen percent. Okay. I managed to buy a lot of the China stocks actually at very low prices mm. before it even ran up. So my actual, actually my cost in China stocks as a percentage of my portfolio was probably only four or five percent. Mm. All right. Then when Alibaba took off, Tencent took off during that, I think it was 20, when was that? 23, early. No, no, early much, much earlier than that. Yeah. Okay. So it grew organically from four to maybe 10 percent. Mm. But my actual cost was 4%. Then uh-huh. the whole thing came crashing down. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, and I didn't sell any shares of my China. None. Except Tencent recently. Out of <laughs> frustration. Okay. <Yeah. laughs> That's the only one I saw. But yeah. Tencent only made up like 0.9% of the portfolio. Right? Mm-hmm. So besides that, I didn't sell any China stocks. Still holding it. And right now, my total China exposure is 4% only. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I think mm-hmm. it's very interesting because, I mean, your YouTube video say, China, I'm done. Right? Yeah. Then when I see a lot of other YouTubers that they share, comment on you, you know, that oh, Adam Koo is done <laughs> for his China stocks, right? He's out, Alibaba, out this. But now you're telling me that you only sold Tencent. But because they didn't watch my video. <laughs> a lot of people, they see my video title, but they yeah. don't watch the whole video. If you actually yeah. watch the whole video to yeah. the end, yeah. I said that like Alibaba, uh, which is now at 70 bucks, yep. I'm only going to sell it at 300, mm-hmm. yes. right? Yeah. So short term, I think it will rebound yeah. to double, triple, then I'm going to get out. Mm-hmm. Right, so long term, I still don't like China. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right, yeah. okay. because I don't like it. You know, you know, China stocks is kind of like this very attractive Chinese girl, very cute Chinese girl, wonderful Chinese girl. <laughs> but you marry her, her father follows you around everywhere. <laughs> See, don't touch her. Don't stand too close. Like, what you want? You know, I rather go for the Angmore, the Western American girl, a bit more expensive, but her father's sleeping. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Sleepy Joe, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. So short term, I, I'm actually bullish on China simply because it's so oversold. I mean, yeah. whatever is so oversold is bound to rebound. Yes. Yes, but will yes. it continue to compound to, to high growth as before? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. You know? All right. So you still, so you're not, you're not bullish about China in the long term? Long term, I'm not bullish. Okay. Uh, but you're yeah. comfortable holding on to what you have right now because you feel the well, value is still there. Yeah. I, I'm still holding on because it doesn't make sense to sell at such distress valuations. It, it makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's back, go back to uh, your main portfolio, which is, I think most of it is in the US yeah. uh, anyway, right? So you were saying that uh, tech, consumer discretionary were your biggest. Uh, movers yep. for the year. So, um, was there any particular stock that you know did particularly well for you, and you did you made a decision somewhere along the way through your analysis or research that said, you know what, this is a company that I wanna I don't know maybe double down yep. on stuff like that. So that someone who's watching this, I mean, it's great to know that oh you made two million, but how can I, someone who's watching this, learn from this as well, so I can you know apply this in the future. I think the whole point is. Not to predict, yeah. you know, people always like to predict or oh, which stock will do well this year. I mean, who would, who know? I also don't know, right? Okay, yeah. It's a matter of staying invested into compounders, into mm. the best quality company. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I know you like the distress one, right? Um, yeah. So, so here's an interesting example. So one of my biggest gains is actually Nvidia. Mm-hmm. But the biggest yeah. joke was I wasn't actually holding Nvidia initially. I was holding TSMC, mm-hmm. a okay. Taiwan semiconductor yeah, yeah. So manufacturing, right? Which, if you look at the two, TSMC is like so undervalued and NVIDIA like so expensive, yeah, right? Yeah. I decided to sell my TSMC. I think I sold it probably in uh, late 2022, last quarter 2022. Mm-hmm. I sold my TSMC. And when I sold it, as you guys know, uh, a lot of uh, people, they subscribe to UIP where they get my real time alert. So once I buy something, once I sell something, I send it to all my subscribers. And when I told them I'm selling TSMC, they went nuts. They lost their freaking brains. Like, how can you sell it? It's so cheap. Adam, you talk about holding on to good companies, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm just not comfortable. And immediately I bought Nvidia. He said, how can you buy Nvidia? It's so expensive, like PE ratio. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's like, I'd rather have a predictable company with mm. good growth and I pay a bit of a premium 
then something that's so cheap but so unpredictable can get bombed anytime, mm. right? And that was one of the best decisions, right? So since yeah. then, I think TSMC still went up, if I'm not wrong, right? But Nvidia took off. Yeah. But, right. but when you when you get into Nvidia, is it kind of almost like a proxy to crypto prices because of the GPUs and everything? Yeah, I know now it's different. You mentioned crypto in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, yeah, okay. it is it is a proxy. I mean, you look at the Bitcoin prices yeah. and Nvidia prices. Yeah, there's a bit of a correlation yeah. there. Yeah, actually, initially. Yeah. Uh, but now it's it's really the AI play. Yeah, it's and AI I'm play. very bullish on AI in the next ten years. Uh, to me, AI is not a hype. To me, AI is the tech revolution part two. Mm -hmm. similar to the internet revolution of the 90s. Okay. So I'm, as you guys remember, the 1990s to 2000 was a huge internet uh, I mean, secular bull market. There were a lot of people who died along the way, if you yeah. remember, yeah. No, they died only when it burst, burst in yeah. 2001, 20, yeah, 2000. Correct, yeah. But in 1990 to 2000, it was a 10 year bull market. That was I was too young for that. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. You can't remember right? <laughs> yeah. So I see that in the next 10 years. Okay. Because I think AI is a bigger game changer than the internet and the software. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, fair enough. So you yeah. think the Magnificent 7 is going to benefit from the AI? You bet. Right. So mm, to yeah. me, it's the Mac 7 except Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> but what if they solve uh, autonomous driving? That's AI as well. It, it, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it just, okay, it... it I'm not saying Tesla is a bad company. Tesla mm. can go up a lot. It's just that it doesn't meet my own criteria. Yeah, fair, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, fair. fair enough. Right. Yeah. So one of my criteria is that I don't like to buy companies that that don't have pricing power. Okay. I like companies that are able to raise price every year. So when a company has to compete and price, it fails my criteria. When a company depends a lot on a CEO, uh, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. In fact, I like companies to have a CEO that could die and no one knows, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then you know that the business is great because the business is great and not because of one man driving it, mm -hmm. right? And of course, third, I, I like to avoid companies that have a lot of physical capex, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. you know, nothing against that stock. Uh, and by the way, I do buy Tesla as a trade. I do trade it a lot using options and I've made a lot of money trading long and short, but I don't invest in it. Okay. It's like there are some people who are good for dating, for one night stand. Mm -hmm. Uh, sorry. <laughs> but you don't want to marry them uh -huh. because they are a bit siao. Right? Next morning, wake up, scream, and you slap your face. So that's Tesla. Uh, okay. <laughs> do you drive a Tesla? No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to NVIDIA because I know you do a bit of technical analysis as well since you're on the topic of NVIDIA. <laughs> so NVIDIA has been touching $500 and just like, as, as, a, as a resistance. And then it keeps like unable to like break that level. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think it's gonna break 500? And if it does, are you gonna like? Yeah, okay, technical analysis is not a predictive tool. I get it, I get you it. Know? So to me, Nvidia is an investment. Mm. It is not a trade, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So as, as, uh, if you look at the technicals, it's more or less consolidating, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's gonna break lower or go higher, I really don't know in the show. I have got no idea, mm -hmm. right? But if you ask me five, 10 years from now, is it, good, is it gonna compound? I, I think so. Okay, but based on technical analysis, mm -hmm. if it breaks the resistance level of 500, what would you do? Based on technicals? Yeah. Uh, then you enter as a breakout trade. Okay. Right? You know, technical analysis, there are many styles. There's what we call breakout trading, and that's what we call um, uh, uh, mean reversion trading. Hmm. I'm actually more of a mean reversion person. Okay. I tend to buy when price drops a lot, it's oversold at support levels, and I enter versus breakout trading, which hmm. I still do, but I prefer the reversal trading style. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So besides NVIDIA, was there any other stock in 2023 that kind of like, you know, was, Our was a favorite hype. stock, guys, Meta. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was bullish on Meta all the way. I mean, when it dropped to like, was it 80 bucks? I kept buying I know all it was the way a down. PE of nine at one yeah. point. I kept buying yeah. all the way down. Yeah. And the reason I was so confident in Meta is because my company advertises on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I asked a very simple question. Are we going to stop advertising on Facebook? No. But did the, did the ads like cost a lot more because it wasn't so targeted at that point in time? Uh... I th we didn't really feel it. Maybe it did, okay. but we didn't like calculate the ROI to the T. Okay. But the point is that we had no alternative. Mm. Where else can we advertise? I mean, we can only advertise on Facebook or Google. Mm -hmm. uh, we have tried advertising on Twitter, didn't work. Advertise on TikTok, didn't work. Only those two work. So I asked myself a very simple question. I said, am I going to keep advertising on Facebook next year? Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, am I going to advertise even more? Yes. So if I'm feeling the same way, so are millions of other businesses. It, it, that simple logic, right? And at the time when I look at 
uh, meta, which I think you all know also, yeah. right? Even if you assume their metaverse goes to zero, you assume zero value to that. Yeah. The cash on their balance sheet is a is, is a freaking no brainer yes, to buy. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. Freaking that price, no I know. Yeah, you know? I wish I was. I mean, I shared that in the video of uh, the a lighting, mistake. Right? As a mistake, yeah. I wish yeah. I had bought more because <laughs> yeah. I think the price was worth the bet. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to me, the the structural change in the iOS privacy privacy changes yeah. was a, was a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it was a bit of a risk. Yeah. yeah for but me. to me, even if they didn't solve that problem, mm -hmm. even if they couldn't solve that, that problem and they couldn't target properly, it wouldn't just be them. All the other social media ad companies will get the same, will have the same problem. Yeah, but then the growth would slow down because yeah. these people, I mean, because yeah. what you're sharing is on your yeah. anecdotal experience of where my company yeah. is going to advertise more. Yeah. yeah but then, and it, it, you can't. Okay. You so know, what I did was that, in right? my, my, my DCF valuation, right? Yeah. I assume zero growth, mm. you're still below valuation. Okay. Okay. So yeah. based on the value, so, so it the kind worst of makes case, sense. even yeah. if Facebook doesn't grow anymore, it's still cheap. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, so, it's so no that's when you know it's a no brainer. No -brainer. That's when you know yeah. it's a no brainer. Because there's a mean reversion to, yeah. mean to, reversion. to yeah. the value, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I think back to this, uh, not really the Facebook, like just now he already brought out, like, you know, like, 2022, right? Uh, 2023, all the best performing stocks for mm. him, right? Is the worst performance in 2022, right? Yeah. And I can remember watching his video at the point of time, right? Mm. Um, uh, he was telling, telling people, you know, you know, set face indicator. Economy say, uh, next is 100% recession. <laughs> then he brought back to 2023. He bring back all the same article that is 100% recession and what happened to 2023, right? Yeah. But on hindsight, it's very easy. But I believe a lot of people during 2022 was a big struggle at the point of time. Mm -hmm. Right, so so I I think he 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 really sees you know that opportunity comes when the market was very down and all this. I, I, I and he brought up the point in his video. And I think it was very very good. I mean, uh, so do your 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 subscribers? Do they also did anybody did them follow you or are they scared at that point of time? Because it really brings a lot of fear to a lot of people. Not yeah. not like you say that okay, uh, Adam say bye, but <laughs> a lot of people are still okay. Let me let, let me tell you my number one rule uh for my students right because. When my students buy my courses, they are in my Discord channel. By the yep. way, I'm not, I'm not on Telegram. Huh? I know some of you have been receiving messages from so-called fake Adam Kuo on Telegram. I'm no longer on Telegram. I'm using Discord because it's more private. Mm. Okay, so anyway. So all my students are in my private Discord uh, channel, right? And uh, those that subscribe to my UIP also there. So every day, I talk to them on Discord. And my number one role is actually a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my number one yeah, goal yeah, yeah, is yeah. to sayang them every day. It's okay. You don't think long term, right? So I, I, I'm there to really uh, help them to manage our psychology every day. Mm -hmm. Because it's easy to read this in a book mm. or attend a course. Yeah, yeah you know, be greedy when others are fearful. But when the market drop, <gasps> you know, people shit their pants. Mm -hmm. yes, and if yes, there's yes. no one there with you, hey, brother, together we can do it, yeah. you will give up. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the greatest. What my students tell me is the greatest um, benefit is me being there to comfort them mm -hmm. <laughs> emotionally. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. like like this uh, yeah. unagony, you know? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of our members also, when they come to our uh, events, uh, they usually <coughs> will appreciate a lot, especially during the down downtime, right? In mm. late 2022, a lot yeah. of them come and they, you know, they have to listen to us talking to them, like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. You know, it's downturn, it's a good time to buy. Yeah, so yeah. they kind of like come here to reinforce themselves. Yeah. And I, I find it quite true because investing, it seems like easy. Okay, actually it's not easy. Right? Emotionally, it's yeah. not easy, it's but very difficult. Technically, it's actually not difficult. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But it's really interesting where at the point of time, the worst sentiment at the point of time was the bottom of the market. It's always like that. <laughs> it's always like that. It's yeah. Always like, yeah, it's that always was the worst sentiment. We've seen it for so many years. Yeah. Yeah. But people don't learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I know you're saying that you, you the, the, the worst performing one became the best performing, but you don't specifically do that kind of like sector no, rotation. No, I kind don't of thing, do right? sector yeah. rotation. You don't do that, right? Yeah, it just, just happened hold, to be that way yeah. for yeah, this year, I just last year. Hold, uh, so my portfolio has a certain construct, yeah. right? Which I hold through good times and bad. So my belief is that if you hold great companies that are compounders, all good companies will go through good times and bad, right? Um, but if you hold good companies, whether high interest rate or low interest rate, high inflation, low inflation, recession or not, they will keep doing well over time, mm -hmm. all right? So half my portfolio are in compounders and about uh, the other 40% uh, are in what I call more defensive, low growth, but very predictable companies, mm -hmm. okay? Like your, your, your Pepsi, 
your Hershey's chocolate, McDonald's, you know, low growth but very, very defensive. Those are considered div- uh, dividend stocks? Are they considered dividend In a way, stocks? but no. I don't buy them for dividend, ah, okay. you know, because the dividends are relatively mm-hmm. very low anyway. Very low. Mm. And then a remaining 10% are, I go into what we call turnaround situations, mm. uh, which companies that short term not doing well, profit drop, but you're betting on a turnaround, yeah. like your Disney, your Estee Lauder, your Nike, your Boston beer, these are the turnarounds. Mm-hmm. Yep. It sounds like a lot of different kind of companies to yeah. monitor over a period of time. So the portfolio <laughs> yeah. is how many companies do you own? Yeah. Right now I've got about 40. Okay. So 40, 40 companies and you're still getting 40%. Yeah, wow, that's why not? usually hey, the more you dive inside, the returns get lesser, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I used to think that way, yeah. okay? Uh, until I studied Peter Lynch. Mm-hmm. Peter Lynch, if you guys uh, remember, he had a 29% mm-hmm. annualized return for 13 years. Mm-hmm. And Peter Lynch, on average, he had 1,000 stocks in his portfolio on average. Mm-hmm. 1,000. Yeah. On average. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay? In fact, when Lynch took over the Magellan Fund, it had 60 stocks. Mm-hmm. And his boss told him, cut it down to 40. 60 is too much. <laughs> he didn't listen to the boss. He bought, to, he bought, he went up to 1,008. Wow. <laughs> and then from there, it went up and up, but the average was 1,000 stocks. So with 1,000 stocks, he got 29% annualized return. So who says you mm-hmm. can't? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right? So my philosophy is I only invest in the top 1% of stocks in the market. So if you, there's about 6,000 stocks in the US market. So 1,000 times 6,000 is 60, right? Yeah. So as long as I'm below 60, mm-hmm. I'm the top 1%. Okay. Yeah. Right, but, but, but we also yeah. need to say that you know yeah. because I I know Adam because when that one year we I, I, we were at his office right yeah. I sometimes I would just go and disturb him and he's <laughs> always on the screen looking at stocks charts and stocks <laughs> I, I'm telling you like, he's a stock market yeah. geek yeah. you yeah. are a nerd when it comes yeah. to the stock market I'm yeah. serious yeah. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> anyone can I'm not so sure <laughs> anyone can says, follow why you why can't you look at me that way like the way you look at the stock <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because it's like every time I go in he's always the screen is always the same yeah, yeah. you know watching at different stocks and all this and I will go in and chat him uh, an hour about stocks I remember yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so for those who are wondering whether you know Adam is like he's, I mean you're the real he's really deal. day in day out yeah, stocks day in day out you're looking at the stocks and all that he's really doing a lot of work okay don't, yeah. don't, don't see like he, he sometimes he speaks like very simple but I tell you he's doing a lot of work a lot of yeah. I think there's it's a lot that of you don't uh, see it only yeah I don't yeah. think anyone can actually replicate exactly what you do you can subscribe to my UIP <laughs> <laughs> then you know exactly what I buy and sell everything I think it's still very yeah. hard but uh, yeah yeah you can learn the, the system but everything. because you know that your emotion you know you are ready yeah. for that but a lot of people they are not ready yeah. I can understand from yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. okay so any mistakes in 2023 yeah so 2023 the, the companies that all the companies that didn't do well were the turnaround situations. Mm. They mm. just didn't turn around. What are the companies? Disney, okay, yeah, uh, okay. Estee Lauder, uh-huh. uh, Nike, but very, very small position. Mm. Actually, my turnarounds, I keep the positions very small. Right? So if you, if you look at 40 stocks, each stock should have a 2.5% allocation if you divide equally. Mm-hmm. And for my turnarounds, I keep it at, at half the normal allocation. So about one point something percent. Okay. So it didn't kill me, la, mm. right? Um, so yeah, the turnarounds all didn't work, but I think they will eventually turn around. So you're still holding on to them? Except Disney, I sold it. Okay. Because uh, I actually look back and I think it was a mistake buying Disney. Um, because again, one of my rules is I like to buy companies that are very predictable. Mm-hmm. And what I find about Disney is when you make content and spend millions making content, there's a lot of uncertainty. It could be a miss, it could be, you don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I don't like it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Boston beer also hasn't turned around, uh, and of course China. <laughs> so China is a turnaround situation. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. It has not turned around yet. Will it eventually? Yeah. I think so. I think but will it go back to the double digit yeah. growth? I don't know. Yeah. Not yeah. only China. I think even in Hong Kong also, it's all <coughs> down. But then the amount of dividends you can get is like crazy. The valuation is so low. Mm. But if the thesis still remains intact, you hold on to it. If the thesis remains intact, I hold on to it. Yes, to it. of yeah. course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in the case of Disney, you just didn't feel that. I mean, I still remember. I mean, nowadays we kind of yeah. recently we kind of like remember Disney as like wow, Marvel and Star Wars. Yeah. Hit after hit after hit. But yeah. and then before that, they had another golden. I think it's a renais- renais- uh, renaissance period where they had Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, and then after that they had this decade. They this lost decade. After uh, Endgame, it was the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I tell okay. you what, the thing that made me decide to sell Disney was when my daughter forced me to watch The Marvels. Okay. I think it was the worst Disney show I ever watched, The Marvels. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. you feel that 
it's just too hit and miss when it comes to the business yeah. is very unpredictable yeah. and I I should have seen it coming. Yeah. Okay. But Actually, it's, it's true. You know, yeah. after Endgame, I didn't really watch any. I think it's, I think there's fatigue because yeah. you follow that series for ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's a reset. Yeah. And then you go like, wow, do I want to do this for another, I don't know, 10 years? <laughs> but that's just yeah. Marvel. Yeah. Uh, they have a lot of other things as well. I mean, the theme parks are... Uh, theme, doing, parks, theme parks do, are doing very well. They were doing very well. But again, the question is, when you sell it, could you put into some other company, which is more predictable, mm -hmm. that has got better growth? Yeah. All right. Now, the other reason I sold it was because I was too optimistic in my valuation when I entered. Mm -hmm. I assumed that they could go back to their pre-turn around free cash flow. Okay which maybe they can, I don't know, mm. but I decided to give it a more conservative valuation based on the existing free cash flow. And when I did that, I think my valuation came up to 70 bucks, okay. which now is at 90, which means it's overpriced. overpriced. Oh. Okay. Yeah. But that, that statement that you made about, you know, you can reinvest it somewhere else in a, in a better yeah. stock. Would, you, would, you, would that apply to like say China, for example? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so, so but you still hold on to China because you feel that it's, there's a catalyst coming? Uh, I mean the Alibaba catalyst is a technical rebound. Okay. Yeah, and I think the to give them some credit, I think the Chinese government is doing whatever they can to save it, mm. right? I mean, Xi Jinping is now you know he's trying to make friends with everyone. They are trying to, um, you know, welcome back investors and all that. Mm. And the recent thing about Tencent, if you read the follow up report, it was because this regulator did it and now he's being fired by the central government. <laughs> so I think it's not so much, I think yeah. it's a lot of left hand doesn't know what right hand is doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. So I think uh, not for the faint of heart, for those who are in, into China, yeah. you're gonna yep. follow yep. it. Yeah. We, we, we're still still bullish on, on So on question Chinese. is, if I was not in China now, mm. if I would I go in? I may, but okay. I'll take a small position mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. turn round play, as mm -hmm. a small position. Okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, that was 2023, a lot of like, you know, uh, movement in your portfolio. You did very well, congratulations. I mean, 40% gain. Yeah, that's very uh, impressive. Very impressive. I mean, US 2 million is, is nothing to sneeze at. A lot of people could retire on that yeah. <laughs> in just one year, right? Well, so, after you pay for the renovation of my house, it's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see your house when it's done, you know? Yeah. Okay, so now it's 2024, you know, it's new year and everything. Do you have any, like, I wouldn't say predictions because no one can predict the no thing. No one can predict. Yeah. Yeah, but what do you feel like it's going to lean toward this year in terms of like, I don't know, macro climate or the stock market in general? Okay, so in terms of fundamentals, let's, let's break it down, right? So the economy is doing okay. Hmm. The jobs report just came out. Jobs stronger than expected. You have got more vacancies than job openings. Unemployment rate is still low. So the economy is doing okay. Inflation looks like it's trending down. It looks like it could hit the 2% target, you know, before the Fed's target. Mm -hmm. The Fed now looks like they've got the economies back, right? Because in 2022, the Fed's job was to kill inflation no matter what. I don't care if I kill the economy, I have to kill inflation, mm. right? But now the Fed has really pivoted and saying that uh, inflation is more or less okay. Mm -hmm. So I think they, they are behind the economy now. That, that's a good thing. Economy is doing okay, inflation coming down. Uh, from a technical perspective, it's always follow the trend, the trend is your friend. Mm. And the mm. point is we are still on an uptrend. As long as we're on an uptrend, the point or the path of least resistance is still up. On a pattern perspective, this is the second year of the bull market. And historically, if you look at the second year of all bull markets, they've always been positive. Mm. It is also the US election year. Mm -hmm. And US election year has also been bullish, although not as bullish as pre-election year. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, but of course, on the bearish thesis, the bears would say, you know, inverted yield curve, mm. right? Recession may still hit because the Fed raising rates last year, the full impact has not been uh, realized, which is true, it could happen, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so yeah, so I mean, I always look at both sides of the argument. I think between the two, I think we will still have a positive year this year. Okay, Ooh. but it doesn't change your the way you invest you just kind of like not. just so stay invested in so whether i think that. this year will be bullish or bearish it doesn't change how i invest in yeah. trade because how i invest in trade is purely based on the trading plan the investment plan yeah 
Yeah, I think that's the main thing that we've been, I mean, on this channel as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's always about buying great companies, holding them for the long yeah. term, regardless. Predictions is purely entertainment. It's entertainment, yeah. yeah but and I know. paying at the right price. <laughs> yeah, paying yeah. at the right price is very, very important. Uh, you mentioned the election year, the US election year. I remember the last time you, this happened four years ago, you had a very, very funny video. <laughs> uh, yeah. His YouTube channel. I think that's, that, that exploded your channel a bit. You got a lot of subscribers. And a lot of haters. <laughs> <laughs> you like controversy. Yeah. Uh, so, you predicted at that point in time that Donald Trump would not win. And if yeah. he did win, you would eat my hat. The, oh, mag, the mega the hat. Mega hat the I mega hat. I bought the mega hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that video. It was so funny. And I think you got a lot of comments saying that, you know, I mean, it's very politicized, yeah. right? Uh, what do you think is going to happen this year? <laughs> I have no idea. I got no are idea. you going to eat a hat again? If, if, are you going to do the same thing? Biden no, versus no, I Trump? <laughs> I've got no idea. Yeah, I, I came close. I, I <laughs> <laughs> you did come close. <laughs> I think more than half or half of Americans are pro-Trump, so you know I don't want to <laughs> offend anyone. It was uh, I remember that I was watching it live. I think Trump was uh, pulling, he was actually leading. He was pulling ahead, right? I was like, oh shit! I was taking my head, putting salt and pepper on it, ready, <laughs> gonna eat it. And then the counts came in for the, yeah. for the rest of and it. I was like, oh yeah, no more head. <laughs> it was very very funny. I mean, if you check out uh, Adam's channel, uh, almost a million of subscribers. Go check it out. It talks a lot about <laughs> investing, uh, trading as well. Yeah. US markets and stuff like that. Uh, and he's very off the cuff, you know, you speak it uh, as it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, you it's like- easy to understand. Easy to understand. Yeah. I think he breaks things down very easily. Uh, I like his metaphors. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so some people might take offense at your metaphors as well. Yeah. <laughs> but he says it uh, as it is. All right, so if you do, if you, do you know, go check it out as well. Um, but yeah, I think uh, we really wanted to have you here for this new year because you know, it's been, 10 years for us. I met you when I was 18. Uncle here is already 42. <laughs> <laughs> 18 years old. Yeah, 42 this year. I was, you, I was 18. I met you when I was a student. Yeah. Uh, I wrote a book where yeah. I wrote this book as well. I mean, I, I didn't put it out at yeah. the beginning, but Adam yeah. helped me publish this book as well. It was yeah. about internet marketing as well. But I remember I met him at around when I was, I think 20. You were 20? Yeah, yeah okay. when I met him. Yeah. 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 So it's a long time. Yeah. yeah so but when we look at each other, we all look the same. <laughs> you look the same. <laughs> I don't I think feel I that we've we'll aged, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Our sphere. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so 10 years for us. I've known you for yeah. a long time. These guys have known you for a long time as well. Uh, and thank you so much, you know, I mean. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for uh, your help. Yeah. 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 I'm so and proud of you guys, how yeah. much you have grown your channel and all that. I watch yeah. all your videos, by the way. Yeah. Oh, thank man. you so, thank much, you so much. I also man. watch all your videos. <laughs> 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 yeah, so do check out Adam's uh, channel, at Adam Koo. Just search Adam Koo on YouTube. Uh, he's almost at a million subscribers. Do check it out. And of course, uh, we're going to do our giveaway right now because it's our 10 year anniversary. We thought yeah. we'd do something for our subscribers. I think uh, we have some very loyal commenters you know they do comment all the time and of course we just want to get more people to come on like, learn more about investing and personal finance so what we're going to do is that we're going to put the details of how you can win these prizes in the description or everything's on instagram uh i mean like the, the headquarters for all these things in, on instagram but don't worry about it uh so very simple once again we have an apple watch that we're going to give away so this is the third prize and then we have an ipad uh air this is the second prize. And of course the big prize, first prize is gonna be this iPhone 15 Pro. Pro. All right, so all these are unwrapped, brand new. And if you do win it, you're gonna come down to our office, you know, take a photo or video. And so yep. the, everyone knows that we're actually giving this stuff away. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not buying it for ourselves. So basically you're gonna have to, you know, um, share this with your friends uh, and subscribe to us on YouTube, yep. uh, Instagram, and TikTok as well. We have all those accounts. Put all the details there as well. Uh, a lot of people who watch this video uh, are not subscribed, you know, according to our analytics. Yeah. yeah, so do subscribe because we want you to, you know, keep track, all right? And then we're going to give away prizes as well. And of course, share a comment about how your investing journey is like over the last, I don't know how many years. We want to hear about your story as well. So don't worry about the details. I'm just going to put that all in the description. Just follow the steps. And if you win it, we want you to come down and we'll give you the prizes, all right? So the best comment and everyone, and if you subscribe to all our channels, you get to get a chance to win, all right? Yep. So with that, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I really had a good time, you know, being back <laughs> in the new year. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to share, guys? You know? Nope. Yeah. Nope, all good right. Happy to see you guys. Yeah, so, so yeah. my good name- to have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good to have you. To have you. <laughs> Maybe we'll have you back. Sure. And if yeah. there's something else we want to talk about, yeah? Sure. Yep. All right, so my name is Adam, uh, Rusman, Victor. Thank you. AK. My namesake over there, Adam Koo, all right, thank you so much for being here. Of course, if you like this round table, please hit the like button. Tell us we're doing a great job. Subscribe to our channel because you didn't have a chance to win something. And of course, uh, you know, stay tuned for the next round table and we'll love to see you again.